Hello and welcome to Crazy Danish Hacker. Today we're going to get the TMSI and KC from our phone, which we need to decrypt our own voice calls and SMSs. First, I'm going to use the Samsung Galaxy S6 phone and I'm going to connect it to the computer with the USB cable. Once it's connected, I will connect it to Kali and then we can see that it's connected here but we also need to open a new window and we can take a look at the USB setting so we can see that it is connected but the interesting thing is that even though this is the media transfer protocol so that's just for transferring images and stuff but if we do the verbose flag and just type less like this then we can see additional information about it so we can see for example the serial number and more stuff if we just press space we can go down a bit and let's see I'm looking for example right now I'm looking at this but it's just MTP and here we go the add commands abstract modem now that's very very interesting that's what we definitely want to play with if we have access to an abstract modem supporting add commands then we can get the TMSI and the KC or encryption key so in order to do that we need to see if it's exposed and it's not there would be a new entry here saying dev tty acm0 like this now a couple of researchers they found out that you can actually switch the configuration with a small tool that they wrote so we will just copy it here and we will need this USB switcher tool now in this case they were able to do it while the phone was locked in my case I don't think it works when the phone is locked anymore but that doesn't matter because I have access to the phone so that's not really a problem because this is not about exploiting the phone it's about decrypting the SMS's and voice calls so we will get the source code here and we'll say USB switch and then we will switch it at C now we also before we try and compile this we need this library right here and this website didn't work when I tried it it may still not work and another thing to note is that we need version 0 0.1 so we cannot use this command because it's going to fail like it's going to install the wrong libraries and it's just going to be annoying instead you can get the libraries from this website and that appears to be the the official repository where you should download the files from because I was looking at a cached version of libusb.org this website and then I found out that it was linking to this website so we will click the legacy and get the recent version of legacy let's click this here and click here save file and now it's in downloads so we will just move the file from downloads to this directory Now we need to extract it. So we'll extract it with this command and then we will go into the directory. To compile it, it should be fairly simple. Just configure. Make sure that there aren't any errors when this is going on. It needs to finish cleanly. So you need Doxygen, for example, and you may need CMake and other stuff, which we installed earlier. But in this case it's working, so now we can type make 
and now it's compiled. So now we can type make install and the library is now installed and ready to be used almost. We still need to run ldconfig. If we take a look at the ldconfig, it basically configures the dynamic linker runtime bindings, for example, for libraries. And since libusb is a library, that's why it's a good idea to run ldconfig because it updates the cache set, in other words. So now we will just take a look at switcher. And we could try and compile it with just GCC and then O oh, switcher. But the problem is that it, uh, it does, doesn't work. We need to specify the library like this L USB. So when we do it like this, then it will work. And now we can try and run switcher. And you can see that it found two configurations. That's good. It opened it and tried to switch, but it failed. Now, typically this will work when you run it two or three times, mostly two times, sometimes three times. So just run it two or three times, and when it says switch, that's when we can take a look right here. So now we can see that the modem is available. So we can actually use that modem now. So in order to use the modem, we also need to make sure that we know the commands to run, because accessing this modem can be quite dangerous. And you should only type in the commands written up here, otherwise you may get into some trouble with your phone. You could brick your SIM card, or you could do something else. So be very, very careful when you're using this. In order to access the modem, we need to use BusyBox and Microcom, and then DevTTY ACM0. Now, if it's not responding right now, when you're just typing a question mark and hitting enter, then you should unlock your phone. And then you should try again. If it still doesn't if it still doesn't work, that works now. If it doesn't work, try control X to exit and then try and restart the program again. So now it's working. In some cases it will start typing random stuff or commands for you in case it does that. Exit the program. Make sure that you don't have some apps running on your phone or phone calls going on, and then start again. So now we can try and run this command. Make sure you type it in neatly so you don't mess anything up. And for example, I messed it up, so I have to start over. You can't, you don't have backspace, so you need to do it correct the first time. And you can see that I messed up again, so we, we will do it this time, it will work. And sometimes, even when you type it correctly, it won't work. So, and we, you, we can't just copy paste, we need to type it, so we'll just try again. And here we go. So this is the KC, and we will also get the TMSI. AT, now it's not responding. Yes, it is. Do not type random commands into this console because you may break your your SIM card or even lock it permanently. So there we go, and that's the team C. Now we we need more of this later, but I'm just showing it now so you know how it works. So this is the encryption key. Now in order to use it with our program, we need to delete the two last bytes. So this is the actual encryption key that we will be using. For the TMSI, we only need the first four bytes or the eight first characters. So this is the TMSI that's being transferred over the air. Both of these are temporary. So for example, this will change when you switch between channels. So in my case, I could be switch between channel 98 and 82, 
And when I switch between these channels, then I could be getting a new TMSI. And so this is random. So when, when you get a new one, then you also need to capture it again. So when we are going to capture data, then we are going to record the TMSI and KC before an SMS then we're going to record it, and then we're going to get the new KC after the SMS, including the TMSI, because at least for phone calls, the KC will change. For SMSs, it may not change, but for phone calls, I've noticed that in my case, it changes per phone call. So that means you have a new encryption key per phone call, so you can't decrypt all the phone calls with just one encryption key. So that's that's quite good for user security, even though, depending on the algorithm used, it could be cracked. So that's how KCs and TMSIs work in short notes. Coming up next, we will look at capturing data and decoding it. Stay tuned and subscribe.